Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Carol Manning and today I'm painting this pair of festive little sparrows in watercolours. Last week I painted some mistletoe in watercolours and I really wanted to put something to go underneath and after a lot of umming and ahhing over different types of creatures I ended up with this little pair of sparrows which I've added some little festive Santa hats too to make them look really Christmassy. The reference photos come from Pixabay and are copyright free images. So before I get going on the painting, a quick word about materials. I'm using Windsor & Newton Cotman colours and the colours I'm using specifically are yellow ochre, raw umber, light red, light red with bit mixed with yellow ochre, burnt umber, van dyke brown, sepia, cadmium yellow, Payne's grey, indigo, lamp black, and then for the hats I used permanent rose and cadmium red, and for the branch I used Rodham Schmincke, Glacier Brown, and Desert Green, and Windsor and Newtman Cotman colours, Sap Green and Hooker's Green. So that's the range of colours I've used, and I've used a number, I think it's number five or six, and nine round brushes and a couple of miniature brushes. So I've drawn out my image and I'm starting today by doing a really diluted Payne's Grey just to put in the whitish areas so I don't accidentally go over them with the other colours. I'm going to be going between the two birds as I have different sections. So I'm putting it on now a diluted wash of yellow ochre. Both of the birds have like a yellowy browny orangey colouring under colour. So starting with the lighter colours basically. Again I'm putting on a very pale indigo wash on this on the chest part of the bird on this one and then a, some diluted paints grey in the darker areas obviously I will be building all this up I did have quite a close look into trying to match up a pair of birds and there seem to be house sparrows and tree sparrows and I think I managed to match up a pair of these were house sparrows a slight differences between them the male looks different from the female the male would be the one on the right with more markings and colouring. Females a little bit more drab in comparison. Okay, I'm just putting a bit of diluted, very diluted permanent rose on this coming back to hats later on we're adding in more colours I'm 
shadow you can see on the above the bird on the right hand one as I dropped a bit of water on it it'll dry out but at the moment it's leaving a slight shadow so as I say I will be dotting around a bit here I wanted to put some linking colors into the that matched the colors I used in the mistletoe as I'm going to be meshing the two pictures together so I've used the same two colors that I used when I was doing the mistletoe which is sap green and hookers green so I'm creating a sort of mossy effect on the branch obviously in the reference photos neither of these birds are sitting on a branch but I wanted to put mine sitting on a branch underneath the mistletoe so I'm sort of making this bit up so just doing lots of little dots of colour um, you see the palette I've got above they are just those two colours but I have added in a bit of lamp black to make a darker colour as well and I've put the two together to make a slight variation so it is just the two colours but with a bit of that black added to one just to create a bit of variation Now around this I did draw paint the branch using Horodome Schmincke, Glacier Brown and Desert Green but um, for some reason the video cut out at that point so you will see that suddenly the brown appear on the branch but it is just a case of building up a couple of washes of the bra those colours. Any browns will do, those are the ones I happen to like using for branches but you could use pretty much any browns. So now I'm working on the eyes of the bird and I'm starting with some indigo but I will then be adding in some lamp black afterwards. They've also got these little, on their eyelids, these little marks all the way around. Again, I, I changed slightly where the highlights were on the eyes because I wanted to try and make it look like they were looking at each other. So again, I'm using the indigo to just put some marks on the fluffy white part of the Santa's hats. There isn't a reference photos for these parts, I'm just making this part up, so um, if you want to do this yourself, I do provide the line drawing. You can find that if you screenshot, by screenshotting at the end of the video, if you pause and screenshot, there is both the line drawings and I've given you the line drawing for both the birds on their own and the birds combined with the mistletoe though obviously you'd have to watch the mistletoe video if you wanted to paint that with it and also the reference photos alternatively you can join my facebook group it's not very big at the moment but you're welcome to join and on there i provide the pdfs of both reference photos and my line drawings so that again my video camera cut out a little bit while I was doing those hats but it was a mixture of caddy and red and permanent rose. The permanent rose creating the, the darker areas on the hat. And I also left as you can see some highlights at the top of the hat. I'm just adding in a few more darker bits into the moss on the tree, tree branch and because I'd added in the brown I wanted to get rid of some of the white patches that were still showing and also just wanted to make a few little bits stick up and then away from the branch or down just to look a bit more natural. So 
now I've got most of the background part done I'm going to start by adding in the details into the birds so I'm starting on the female bird and I'm using a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Umber depending on how dark I want it so it's just a case of looking really carefully at the reference photo at this stage and working my way around the bird adding in all the feathers looking which direction the lines go in um, there's normally quite a bit of crisscrossing when you're doing feathers and fur for that matter there's variation in the lengths of the lines you need to do as well as a little bit of crisscrossing and obviously change the direction depending on the direction they're going in the picture but in order to make it look natural there is that apologies for the jump again I'm having a few issues with my camera so it's just a case of working your way around obviously this is also a case of layering when you're doing animal fur or feathers there's quite a lot of layering involved in it so doing the if you like the fluffy feathers first rather than the big ones so get all the fluffy ones in first and then I'll start working on the bigger feathers So I'm very carefully looking at the reference photos, seeing I have my reference photo on my tablet and obviously I can zoom in and out on that. So I am looking quite closely at the reference photo. I don't bother printing it out because it's a waste of ink. And so now I just have my tablet set in front of me with the image on and I zoom in and out of the different parts and scroll to between images. Obviously you can print the photo out if you find that easier to work from a photo. So I'm looking at the big feathers. There's a vein part down the middle and then the feather lines go in alternate directions down it so apologize for the odd flickering as well I bought myself a new overhead light that also has helped with the shadows but every now and then it starts going into a crazy flickering mode I'm not sure I might send it back still so I'm not sure it's doing quite what it should I'm sure it shouldn't be flickering at this stage when it's new Okay, it's just a case of working your way around all of this. It is a case of layering, so this is just the first layer. There's quite a lot of details in these little birds, and I do work detailed. I don't do a lot of wet on wet. A lot of my work is wet on dry. If you're doing this yourself do give yourself time I've speeded this video up quite a lot because it was a very long painting I think it just took me over three hours to do do this particular bit possibly a bit more so I had to cut it down a lot to, in order to make it into a reasonable length video for the YouTube thing So I say if you're doing it yourself, just remember 
it takes a long time. And this took me a few hours, so it does require patience. And you can do it, and you don't all have to do it all in one go. I do because mostly because I'm filming, but um, you can do it over a few days. So my bigger pictures I do, the Sally and I do do that way. I do them over a few days. Sometimes I have, not the ones I do for the videos, but if I'm doing them for selling, then I'll sometimes have two or three paintings on the go at a time and I'll sort of go between them, the different ones. So I'm using a mixture of Van Dyke Brown with a touch of sepia in this one, I think. So putting in the first layer of the dark values, it will have more added to it. It will be darkened down a bit more than this, but this is the first layer and my more diluted version for these light feathers. So I'm now just working my way around on the lighter feathers of the male sparrow. Putting in a few lines into the feet. More outlines at this stage. So now I've done that, I'm starting to put in some of the rest of the detail on the wings of the male bird. So it's just a case, like before, of looking really carefully at the details, trying to get the shape of the wing feathers in. You'll see I'm working on the dark part to start with. Looking at the direction of the feathers does vary and where there's blocks of colours. I'm just working my way all the way around. I'm not sure whether it would be useful, perhaps you could let me know. Um, would it be useful if I was zoomed out a little bit more and had the palette, both the paint palette plus my mixing palette showing so you could see what I'm doing with those. I'm not sure whether that would be helpful or not. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I uh, say I've been doing this about three months now and so far I've really just been working on filming the sort of pictures I do myself but um, as time goes on I'm thinking perhaps doing some simplified pictures or simpler pictures, smaller sections of plants or flowers, smaller sections of animals or just one single animal that would be easier to follow along if you're trying to paint yourself. Um, I'm not sure what's most useful for those of you that are watching and certainly those of you that are subscribed. Perhaps you could let me know in the comments whether it'd be useful or whether you'd like me to do like simpler pictures that are easier to follow or whether you prefer me to be doing these longer pictures that slightly speed it up. Obviously if I was doing uh, a simpler picture where there was less that was less involved I'd be able to do it more in real time. I'm not sure what would be most useful. Or perhaps a mixture of the two. Perhaps I could carry on doing some of these slightly more complex pictures some of the time and some simpler 
easier to follow paintings. I say, perhaps if you let me know what would be most useful to those of you that are watching, as obviously I am doing this for people to watch. So it's um, what is most useful to the people watching as to what I should would be helpful to do. I'm now beginning to add in some of the reddish colour to the wings. I'm using a mix of light red, that's the name of the paint, Not doesn't mean it's just light red, it's the name of the paint and the Cotman colours, with a touch of yellow ochre in it, to give it a sort of reddy yellow colour. So working my way round all the bird, starting to put those colours in. Well, I see very many sparrows in my garden at the moment where I've recently moved to, well, about a year or so ago. Um, we've got loads and loads of crows around and it seems to not have as many garden birds. I can't put the, I've always put bird feeders out before, but I don't want to attract all the crows into the garden. Well, I think they're rooks rather than crows because they nest in a large, hundreds of them in the trees near me, down the end of the driveway. And when I looked it up, it said when they nest in that amount together, it's normally rooks and it's called rookery. But as a result, I don't want to encourage them into the garden by having bird feeders. So I don't get to see the range of garden birds I used to in my previous house, which is a shame. I used to like feeding the birds. So back to putting in the darker colours, this is a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Lamp Black. And like before, it's just a case of working my way around. As I said, there is a lot of layering in these pictures. So looking very carefully, occasionally you'll see me adjust something when I've looked again at the reference photo and realise I've either put something in slightly wrong or needed to add something. Obviously they're not photographic, I don't paint photographically accurate, close but not, I'm not a somebody who paint, aims to paint to make it look like a photograph. you can see with that little bit there I suddenly realise that you can't see the really see the lines in between so I just went over them completely dark so yeah there's a lot of looking closely at reference photos with these I 
It's not going to matter if it's not 100% accurate, it's more the feel of it. As long as it looks reasonably natural. So trying to get all the feather lines in. I'd say they are quite detailed on this. Obviously, as you can see, using a fine line pen with this, I tend to use a Pro Art miniature brushes for the, a lot of my close up detailed work on birds and animals and plants. Um, but a bigger brush, if it's got a fine point on, would probably be fine. It's just I'm more comfortable using these, so I tend to use what works for me. But um, yeah, you just use what works for you. If you've got slightly bigger brushes and you can keep a fine line on them and that's great. Also I tend to be a little bit cack handed so as you can see there is the odd splodge on the picture where I've either dropped or flicked paint accidentally. Um, Usually most of this can be lifted off with just some clean white, clean water brush, clean brush and some kitchen roll. Though the big splodges in the top right hand corner of this I will end up trimming off because that ended up too thick to clean off. but normally just the odd little splodge will clean off with some clean water and a brush and some kitchen roll. I will leave a list of the materials I use, paints, paper, anything else, in the description for those of you who might want to know. So at the moment I'm just using a basic set of Windsor and Newton Cotman colours. I am thinking of perhaps asking for Christmas and other professional paints just to see if it makes a difference. I'm fairly happy with these to be honest but um be interested to see whether it does make a difference to the colours. I do use a few other paints, I would say quite like the Horodem Shrinker super granulating ones for background washes and details like when I'm doing branches and things more for they are more for landscape background bits when I'm adding landscape to my wildlife. I tend to quite often add those and I've got a few other odd paints here and there where I wanted a different colour. Slowly build them up.
probably like a lot of people that do arts and crafts, I've got a myriad of different types of materials, various old pencil sets and acrylics and gouache and various other things, as well as other types of crafts as well that I've done over the years, so probably like a lot of you that end up with a lot of different things. I'm just putting a wash of um, mixed of that yellow oak and light red on just to give it a bit of a joining together and darkening down the eye around the sparrow a bit because it was too white before. So I will be coming back to that one but now starting the work on the female sparrow and Again, I'm using that Van Dyke Brown. I'm just working my way around, looking where all the lines are and gradually putting them all in. Just a little bit gray and light red to the beak, so I'll be coming back to that again later. So I'm working on the fluffy feathers first and I say this is the next deeper level. It doesn't necessarily cover the level below, that still shows through, which is why you get the layering of effect. Starting to work my way around those big feathers. So if you're enjoying this, if you could please press the like, it'd be much appreciated. As it help my, helps my channel to go grow. I'm only going three months, so I intend to keep going. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this. It's quite good actually, because um, you're trying to put a video up every week or two. It makes you paint regularly. So as well as the stuff I do myself for selling, um, it makes me paint other stuff as well. So it helps improve my range and skills by painting regularly like this. So I am really enjoying it as well as I enjoy the um, video editing and stuff, which is all new to me this year. So, as well as pressing like it, perhaps if you're enjoying this, perhaps consider subscribing. I'll say that my channel will probably develop a bit more, perhaps in different, slightly different directions. I'll say I'm still undecided quite whether just to carry on as I am or vary it slightly. never know, perhaps at some point I might even get in front of the camera up at the moment and the thought of that terrifies me. <laughs> Adding some more detail to the feet, putting in some of the lines shadows. I 
darkening down that left hand one quite considerably as it is really in shadow in the reference photo and now I'm starting to put that wash of ready yellow that I was using before which I said was light, light red and yellow ochre mixed So hopefully I matched these birds correctly. Um, I think I got the two that was um, house sparrows. I wouldn't 100% swear to it, but when I was looking on the identification thing, I think I got it right, but if I didn't, then I apologise. Using a big brush just to stick a, some extra darker sections in. Just trying to refine the outlines. As I said, if you're doing this yourself, do give yourself time. This is speeded up. I need to take me a long time. Putting a darker version of the light red and yellow ochre on. And as always, just working my way around, defining some of the dark areas, looking a bit more shaped to some of the feathers and just putting in some slightly darker bits. A little bit of a wash of paints grey over some of the areas to put a bit more of shadow in. On both of the birds, putting the shadows in and then likewise the highlights gives the birds or animals more form so it's quite important so lifting a few bits to create some highlights just using clean water brush and a bit of kitchen roll I say it does give it more shape by adding this at the same time and again just the same with the hat really Put in a few, a bit of a wash on the underside of the branch to give it a bit more of a shadow. And then putting back in a little bit of the detail that was lost, not to the same extent, but just to make it 
blend in properly. You do the use, lose the odd bit when you put the wash on, but um, you do gain a lot of form and shape to it, so. So just adding a little bit more touches to the hats to define it a little bit more. Still using the same two colours, Rose Madder and Cadmium Red. Just intensifying the colours a little bit. So there isn't a reference tool for these, so if you're doing it, you'll just have to watch what I'm doing because there is no reference photo. I'm just making this up. And putting a bit more of the indigo lines into the white fur parts of the sand hats to make them stand out a little bit more. Maybe they're a little bit lost, so I just wanted to put some of the more of the fur lines into it to make that stand out more. And a few little touches, defining the beak a little bit more. a little bit more of the cadmium yellow and to finish that off and then I'm going to add a few highlights with a skewer jelly pen I think this one's a 0.5 just to put a few odd white highlights in now if you're a watercolour purist you probably wouldn't be using one of these but I'm not I just use what works for me So just going around it, just adding in the odd highlight here and there. So I think next week I'm doing a fir tree branch with some fir cones and needles on sort of, sort of thing you'd stick in the middle of a table for a Christmas display. That may well have a part two to it as well. I haven't decided yet. Just doing a few little odd finishing touches, but I'm almost at the end. OK, 
Okay, and that's the end picture. So the screenshots are coming up for the reference photo and my outlines. As you can see in these two pictures, on the right hand side, I added it to the mistletoe to create a nice Christmassy picture. So I'll probably add a background to that at some point. So reference photos and line drawings are coming up. If you've enjoyed this, if you could please press the like. And if you'd like to come back and see more, perhaps consider subscribing. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching.